You're not rucking today, right? So you got uh, you got to get one of these. You got to get one of these Yeti cups. Okay, I guess got my cat. Cup. Reason being, well, because the cat cup, along with any of my other ceramic bugs, the coffee gets cold in like five minutes. It you does. Know? And it coffee does. running to the microwave and throwing it up. So this keeps it warm for like half an hour. So all right, it doesn't have okay. a handle, but it's. Oh, did you see that? Um... It was a study. It was a study about how um, there's more microplastics in bottled water than they previously thought. No, I didn't see that. I, yeah, I, was thought, uh, I thought PCBs were were pretty high if, you, if it gets hot. So it was actually it was released Monday, um, and it says that basically bottled water contains thousands of nanoplastics so small they can they can invade the body cells. <sighs> what? Great. Isn't that awesome? <clears throat> Great, because I'm I'm sucking a gallon of water a day out of plastic bottles. Me me too. I mean, I I drink out of plastic cups, plastic bottles. So I'm I'm gonna. I, I just came across the headline like right before um, we connected. So I got to take a look. But man, oh boy, everything's horrible. <laughs> well, speaking of horrible, look at that little short I sent you while you were. Uh, in, in your text while I, while you were away. Okay. We, we can talk. I think that'd be a good topic for today's show. <clears throat> Let me see if I can, uh, Just be, be, only because shit like that is becoming epidemic in, okay. in gyms today because of the ubiquitous tripod and social media. All right. And so, so just so you know, I'm going to put, I'm going to put the link. This is what Romano just sent me. Uh, if anybody wants to take a look. So I don't even know what's happening. Can you kind of tell me what's going on here? It, th yeah, there's this, this, this dude with the, with the, the headpiece on oh, is negotiating a, a personal, a personal best, a, a personal record with 315 pounds on the Smith machine. I don't think I have ever seen a single practitioner with more assistance than that unless he was using like a crane that, that, that's just <laughs> absolutely ridiculous and combined with his attitude about it you know his psych up in the beginning it's just so comical but at the same time endemic of the the the, the trash that's going on in the gym right now that that invades other people's use of the facility it's just right, yeah. nuts what these guys are doing man yeah you gotta remember so, behind him there's a tripod and a halo light okay so right you know there that he, he's not a lone practitioner you know what i'm saying i mean <laughs> i didn't know that he was what, what is on his head it's it's like, it's to do this you know like a neck <laughs> ex, you know br uh, harness and he's got it on his head like, it, like I, I i think shit like that is it, it on the surface it looks like it's a joke, but when you actually go to the gym and you see these guys doing this shit, they're not joking around. This is real. This is what idiots are doing today. And it's yeah. So it, if anybody it goes, okay, it sort of goes to that you know article I just submitted about you know there's only one way to do shit, and and right. that is the classic example of not the way to do shit. So. I posted the the link in the comments, but basically, it's a dude. I, I don't know. I don't know what he's wearing, but it's just kind of like I don't know. I guess for me, it's like back in the day, if you were gonna do a PR, uh, back in the day, meaning not too long ago, uh, you would basically just go for it. You didn't need any any apparatuses uh, around your head or. Uh, I mean, he's got the band and he's got the bands and he's got, you know, the, the big block and he's ostensibly moving that weight, you know, two thirds of an inch, you know, by the time it's all said and done. And he's counting that as a 315 PR bench press. And that is just nuts. What does that accomplish? What does that what does that do? You know, I mean, if you're if you're if your mission in the gym is to build your body, what the fuck is that guy doing? I Ground don't know. He's a yeah. pioneer, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that dude is doing, but I, I do know I do see what you're saying about, you know, everything's a spectacle and everything's yep. got to be, because uh, not you know it's what's flashy is what's better, right? You know, because the basics don't work. 
So no, you gotta... course, but well, the, the basics don't work for the basic reason that the basics aren't done basically correct. That's yeah. that's why. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got a somebody want to know your okay. A couple things. Uh, one is. Who do you think trained harder, Ronnie Coleman, Branch Warren, or Dorian Yates? Oh, God. That's a great question. Wow. Um, I, and I've seen all of them train, so I, I have firsthand experience of this. So I think they're different. I think they're – yeah, they're they're different. Um, how can I explain it? Um, Ronnie – loved lifting heavy weights so it, it didn't matter what his form was like it didn't matter if he ripped all his muscles he just wanted to lift heavy weight and he did very okay. heavy weight and it was very impressive dorian was scientific he had a plan he had a he, he devised plans he followed his plans and he deduced from the available information at the time what would be the most effective method that he could employ and how well he could do it to a very, very, very high intense degree. Branch Warren is just an animal. I mean, he, he is pro the, the effort that I've seen this guy expend in the gym is just absolutely mind boggling. And when you look at how much mass that guy put on in during his career, when I met him, Paul Dillette brought him over to, to me backstage. I think it was at the USA or the Nationals like bajillions of years ago. He was a middleweight branch. Jeez. Okay. So, you know, you're, you're talking close to, you know, 70, 80 pounds or more that he put on, that he put on his body with. And you could say to some degree, aesthetically limited genetics, but um, none of those three guys, except for probably Ronnie had, had the best genetics. Um, so man, that's a hard question to answer. Those three guys would probably, uh, along with maybe two or three others stand out in my mind over all 52 years that I've been in the gym as the, the hardest training guys I've ever seen. Got it. All right. Another one. Uh, you got, you got any tips? Ryan C wants any tips for controlling appetite during diet? Yes. Suck it up. That's what you got to do. This is the, you, everybody. I, I, don't, I don't know. It's like Ron, Ronnie was famous for his saying, everybody wants to be a bodybuilder, but nobody wants to lift heavy ass weights. It's, everybody wants to be ripped, it's good, but nobody it's good impression. wants to suffer. I like right? that impression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I met him a few times. So, you know, everybody wants to be ripped, but nobody wants to suffer. Yeah. You know, it's you got to suffer. I mean, Rich Gaspari tells this great story about, you know, he was training with, Lee Haney for the Olympia, Lee's Olympia, not his. And, you know, he, he was starving. He was absolutely starving. He, Rich hated tomatoes, like fresh tomatoes. He was starving so bad. They were in the supermarket. He bought a bag of tomatoes and he ate all of the tomatoes with his hands in the parking lot, juice running down his face. Excuse me. But starvation will bring you to levels of things you would never anticipate doing. But you got to get there, and it, it's 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 the theme of that article I just wrote. The, the workaround. Everybody's looking for the workaround. There is no tip beyond suffering. You have got to understand that the reason everybody in the world doesn't look like Mr. Olympia is because it's fucking hard. It's yeah. the hardest thing in the world to do. I have had lawyers, doctors practitioners of difficult tasks and difficult vocations tell me succinctly all the time, getting ready for this show, getting into contest shape was the hardest thing I've ever done. And it is, it's the hardest thing you will ever do because you have to force your body to do what it doesn't want to do. Your body does not want extra muscle other than the the basic requirements for mobility. Your body does not want to suffer and starve. And your body wants to hoard fat because of just in case something bad happens. So you're fighting nature every single step of the way. And okay. the only way to do that is with your brain. So then, okay, that's what I was going to say. So then would you say like the tip would be 
just to mentally prepare yourself that it's going to suck. And when it starts to suck, remind yourself that it's going to be horrible and it's going to suck and just go with it anyway. You got to love the suck. Right. Exactly. That's Embrace like, like, it and accept it that it's not going anywhere. Got it. Right. No, that's, that's what I was thinking uh, was, you know, I don't know if he was looking for some like uh, put, put like lemon and some, uh, I don't know. Like, well, I mean, yeah, lemon. I mean, I you know, can like, eat, you can, sure, 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 sure. You can eat sugar-free jello and you can, you know, munch on celery and do shit like that. But the bottom line is you, you look at a built dude on stage, you look at a guy, you know, 5'10", 230 pounds. That is a fucking warrior. Okay. He got that way by being a warrior. He did not get that way about looking for the workaround. He got that way by suffering. That's what you have to do. You must suffer. If you don't suffer, you're not going to get there. Period. Okay. Another question here. Uh, let's see. Well, two. Actually, we'll start with Davies, and then we'll go back to the one about Rodin. Um <clears throat> I got to start my cut in two weeks and I've been reading about what supplements could aid me during this. And I've been looking at L-cartine and glycerol. Which would you prefer? Neither. Why? There's just, you know, what happens in a, in a situation like this is what usually happens. A, a study will come out and they'll, it's, sometimes it's a study unrelated to bodybuilding. Ozempic is a great example. The, the studies on Ozempic showed that while people are trying to lower their A1C and get their diabetes in control, the, a side effect was that they were losing weight. Clenbuterol was another example of that. Numerous scientific studies showed the efficacy of clenbuterol for as a bronchial dilator, the side effect of which created a tremor, which caused the body to burn more calories. So it was conducive to fat burning. Right. So side effect elements of, of normal routines of treatment sometimes work their way into, into sports, particularly bodybuilding, as an aid to, you know, affect fat loss. So you get a study that shows, what did he ask for? Carnitine? Car yeah. Carnitine, carnitine is supposedly works in the method uh, it works to help your body convert more fat to energy and while that may be true to some degree it, it pales in comparison to doing 40 minutes of steady state cardio or 20 minutes of of a, of a circuit so you say well let's do that let's add that on top of it sure you can stack up as many things as you want to stack up on top of it leave no stone unturned and that would be great but what happens is predominantly with the people i see is they they don't do the underlying stuff they just look for the addition to what can i take to help me burn fat right well, if you I wouldn't look at any obscure thing that has a 0.0002% effectiveness in, in seeing yeah. your goal. I would use the tried and true. You, clenbuterol is a great one. You know, just sticking to your diet is a great one. Yeah, the foods you choose is another great one. I mean, if you have all of those bases covered and you're looking for that teeny tiny slight advantage that something like L-carnitine is going to give you, by all means, do it. But the problem is most people, and I'm not knocking this dude, whoever he is, I no, I don't know you and I don't know where you're at with this, but what usually is the predominant issue is they don't do the underlying the underlying methods yeah. that are proven to work. And they just want to rely on the supplement. And it doesn't work. Right. That, that's actually what I was going to say was, are the basics covered? Are you there? Is everything dialed in and, and ready to rock? Because then that's when, as you said, that if you have that or that's not together, well, then you know where you got to start. Nothing else is going to make a difference. Uh, and that's, I guess, as a coach, right? That's exactly what you, if, if somebody came in and said, uh, what this guy just said, and they didn't have their basics, they didn't have everything ready to go. What, what would you say? Just get out of here? Like start there and come back when you're ready? Yeah, you know, that's a, it, 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 I guess it depends on the client. I mean, I, ha I, had, I had a great challenge a couple of years ago. I had a 60 year old woman who was returning to competitive bodybuilding after about 20 years off. And she didn't want to use any drugs a 60-year-old woman, postmenopausal 60-year-old woman is, is, a, is a difficult challenge. 
yeah. I, I laugh at guys, you know, these trainers who coach guys like Ronnie Coleman and Jay Cutler, you know, and, and you know, rest their success on the backs of these champions when I, I could take Jay Cutler and feed him Snickers bars and get him ripped. That's not difficult. Getting a 60-year-old postmenopausal woman shredded for competition without using any drugs whatsoever, now that's a challenge. Okay. And you can do that depending on the compliance of the of the client if the client is compliant and they do what you say and you have a plan and you know it's going to work it's going to work so stop looking for the workaround got it um okay another one i'm going to jump i will get back to that road well, okay let's go now do you think uh sean roden would have won more olympias uh if it wasn't for what what occurred absolutely okay absolutely no question do you think that uh, 2019 was, or was it 2019 or 2020? I can't remember anymore. But um, do you think that that was, and, and we'll just be, we'll play the game. So if he was able to compete in the year in which he wasn't able to, I guess over the two years, do you think that those would have, I mean, and, and again, it's always hard to say, but given that he was going to be healthy and everybody else came in the exact same condition that they were in, uh, yet, what would what what's what's your prediction? I know it's hard, but we'll go with it. Uh, yeah, well, it's, you, you know, yeah, you're imagining things here, but right. if, if, but if you took the elements of the picture and put them together, I think you would have him repeating numerous times because his structure was just so good, and you know, in silhouette with no light, if you just put him up in, against a backdrop, you would see like Mr. Olympia. I mean, he had all of the. Every, he had everything. He had absolutely everything. And I, I, I would have predicted him winning multiple Olympias. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, another person asked about uh, the benefits of waist belt, wearing a waist belt during training. Do you, do you see any or do you think it's kind of a waste? Define waist belt. Are we so I think about he's talking about a weight belt. I think he's talking about a weight belt. So when you're, you know, a lot of people when they're going heavy, they put on a belt uh, for, you know, to prevent their back from collapsing i'm supposing but uh what do you think and when do you think it's appropriate to use it or when would you suggest using it well you know there's waist trainers and there's lifting belts so i just want to make it clear what we're talking about well let's start as with far... let's start with well let's do both but we'll start with one we'll start with the belt okay this is personal this is my personal opinion based on my experience and it is not the law so take it for what it's worth I used to use a belt all the time until I blew my back out at doing squats. I was trying to do a 500 pound squat. I was working towards it. I was up around, you know, I was, I, I was, I guess I was doing 495 and I blew my back out. Um, I, I think, I think some equipment like that becomes a crutch because what happens is if you're doing a heavy lift, specifically a, a squat, I think that's the most advantageous you know, use of, of a lifting belt is you push against it. And by pushing against it, what you should be doing is the opposite. You should be pulling your abs in in order to focus the effort down into your heels, which is how you want the weight to go up. But if you're down and you're pushing your stomach against this belt, you're, cre you're sort of creating a leverage, you know, element to the lift that doesn't belong there. So <clears throat> I, I've, I've seen a lot of people rely too much on the belt and not enough on their musculature. As soon, after I recovered from that injury, and this was 40 years ago, mm -hmm. I never used the belt again, ever. I never used the belt again, and I never used wrist straps. And subsequently, I grew a very, very strong lower back. I never had a back issue after that, and I grew – it's totally unrelated, but I grew really good forearms by not using straps. So th those types of assistance, and I know I'm going to get a barrage of people telling me the belt, the belt, the belt, I understand. I totally get it. You're protecting yourself and you're doing, you know, what you think is the best thing to do with that piece of equipment. But I think it becomes a crutch. And if you're, if you're relying on the belt to, to enhance your back strength, you're going to lose. What you should be doing is hyperextensions, weighted hyperextensions, stretching, you know, back work, 
you know, good mornings, stiff legged deadlifts. If you're doing those kinds of things, you don't need a belt. You've got your belt built in. The other thing it does by pushing against it, you're Everybody wants to know why everybody has a distended abdomen. It's not just one reason. It's many reasons. And one of them is the belt. All right. Now let's go to the waist, uh, waist trainers or waist trimmers. I don't even know what you said. I've never used one because I'm, th- I'm picturing the old timey people, uh, black and white, like in the thing that like vibrates and they're just kind of sitting there. <laughs> <and they're> like, <laughs> no, no, no. Waist trainers. It's, 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 it's a, it's an elastic belt. Girls use them. Guy, I've never seen a Well, I'm not sure I could say that, but pretty much guys don't use them. Okay. Girls use them, specifically figure and bikini girls, because they think if they squish their guts in, they're going to get a tinier waist. It may work to some degree, but the problem is where are your guts going? (laughs) So there was a great um, CT scan posted many several years ago when these waist trainers first became popular among the the the, the bikini the bikini arati um they, they, they you know they're all they're all training with these you know tight belts on you got to understand you have organs in there so if your normal waist is like this big and you got intestines and a spleen and a stomach and you know gallbladder and kidneys and you go like this where are your guts going they're going up or down they got to go somewhere. Yeah. So you're, you're creating issues by using those things. Whereas if you did twists and have abdo- you know, abdominal work that, you know, utilize the, the built in girdle that you actually have beyond the rectus abdominis and you use, use those ancillary muscle groups in, in your core, you'd have a much better, you know, trimmer waist than if you did a, use the waist trainer. And I've done this numerous times with women who are, you know, fitness figure, bikini girls, throw that fucking belt out. You're going to hurt yourself with it eventually and concentrate on the core. Now I got, there's going to be 20 guys. No, the waist trainer works. I used it on all my girls. Try not using it. See if that works because, you know, it does. Believe me, it does. I also want to go back to wrist straps. So, you, you said you've never used them. I, I can't think that I've ever really used them because I was, I mean, maybe if I was just trying to, you know, do something that was clearly way heavier than I would actually train with or just trying to pull one, but I never used wrist straps consistently. And it was just because I felt like it was going to take away from what I was going for, for the time, you know, I was try. I wanted the grip. I wanted to be able to do it uh, without the assistance, but why, why are you against it? Two reasons. One is I knew this bodybuilder back in the day, a guy named Ali Mala. He was a friend of Samir Banus. And Ali Mala had amazing forearms, like Lee Prince caliber forearms. And I I had I was using wrist straps and I had them kind of dangling around my wrist. And I was at talking to him at Gold's and I said, How do Ali, how did you build your forearms? He takes my hand, takes the straps off my hand, and throws them over there. He goes, Quit using those things. And I never used them again. Couple of days later, after he threw my wrist straps away, I watched Mike O'Hearn deadlift like 800 pounds or some crazy, you know, amount of weight. No one wrist handed, strap. one hand, pretty much. And then, he lifted, <laughs> he, and then he lifted it over his head and he spun it. <laughs> he lifted it up like I'd pick up a paper clip off the ground. Okay? Well, he's a strong dude. And I never saw O'Hearn use straps ever, and I watched and I saw him train every single day. So. Between that and what Ali Mala told me, I never used straps again. And ultimately, my forearms became one of my best body parts. So, um, you know, look at my Facebook page. I have, I have, I have pretty decent forearms, and I never, ever, 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 after that day, used straps. And that had to be 35, 40 years ago. So, yeah. it's, it's just crutches. I don't like crutches. I, I don't believe in them. I believe in strength. If you can't lift something up, that's the message your body is signaling to you that you're not strong enough, not that you need some form of artificial assistance that once it's gone, it's not going to help you. Yeah. I knew somebody would, I knew, anytime you mentioned Michael Hearn, somebody throws out something. Um, so it's interesting. I still don't get why that guy sure. is such a lightning rod, right? I don't get it. I don't understand Isn't why. That amazing? You, know, you know why? I'll tell you why. I figured it out. Mike O'Hearn is the quintessential Ken doll on steroids, even though, you know, he says he doesn't use them, whatever. Sure. It doesn't matter. 
What matters is there is a genetic pool among human beings that within that pool, there are outliers. And if you pluck them out and relative to specific sports, tennis, basketball, baseball, you will find outliers that are phenomenal. They are built, constructed, wired in such a way that they are amazingly exceptional at what they do. Sprinters, think of all of the great, great, great athletes and all the other sports that we ever, nobody accuses them of taking steroids. Nobody. Magic Johnson was never accused of taking steroids. Think of it. Any t- superstar tennis player, so was Serena Williams ever accused of taking steroids? You certainly could say it. Look at the girl. But no one ever has. It's talent and ability and training. So you're going to get guys like O'Hearn. Now, now if O'Hearn was a, was a bowler, no one would say shit. Yeah. But because he's a bodybuilder and he's handsome, you know, you've got those, you got a super gigantic jealousy element running through the minds of people that want to, you know, assess this guy and attack him because they're jealous. Who in this world, what dude in this world would not want to look like Mike O'Hearn? I mean, come on. So... You know, that's what it comes down to. It comes down to the fact that there are outliers in every single sport there is. And unfortunately, bodybuilding is all about what you look like and not about what you do. And that breeds a fertile ground for lightning rods like him who happen to say something that seems to be patently unbelievable by the masses. And that's just the way it is. And I, I I feel like I say this a lot, and it's totally not. Uh, I'm not. It's not a cop out. Every time I've met Mike, he's been super cool and super he's nice. Cool and cool so, yeah. so I mean, it's like a lot of a lot of times when I, I I see comments about you know a lot of folks, and I'm like, geesh, are these people really that bad? Because when I meet them, they're 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 kind of nice and they're 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 you know pleasant. So I, I don't know. I'm not saying that you know. It, it, I'm not saying that you guys are wrong. You probably have your your reasons, but man, I don't know. It's we do have another. Okay, we'll jump out. Uh, uh, sorry, I think. Okay, hi Nico. Uh, excuse me, guys. Can you tell me how to increase thickness in the back and what supplementary foods are indicated to obtain better results? Uh, big hug for both. Of you. Oh, thanks, Nico. Yeah, there's a hug. See, yeah. Um, wow. That, that's such a it's that's a, such a okay. it, 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 it's, it's a broad question it's it's a, it's a question that everybody wants to ask but i will say one sec don i'll say this once somebody did jump in so maybe this can help um you know with, with so somebody said hey nico uh um Michael says, I did heavy core back movements, pull downs uh, with wrist straps with a custom wide bar, sometimes for less reps, uh, bop, 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 the 405 to build a Ronnie Coleman or a Big Mike. So, I mean, that's something that he was doing. I think, I don't know if you're talking about one movement or just like the series of movements or like a strategy in terms of rep schemes, but I, that's what I mean. It's kind of a rough question, but... I, I don't know. I feel like I know what you're going to say. Uh, and I'll tell you if I'm right after you're done and I'll be, on- and I will be honest. I will be honest if I, if I'm correct. Okay. So the question is a bit nebulous because I don't know where this guy is in his journey. So if you're a beginner who's only been lifting for a few months or a year and you are assessing your physique compared to, you know, like a Joel Stubbs back, who is the best back in the world ever. And you, I want my back thick and wide like him. Well, who doesn't, you know, but you're never going to get it because you weren't handed, you weren't dealt that genetic hand that he was. So you got to take the genetic element out of the picture and say, okay, I want a thick back. Um, You got to do, it it comes, thick back comes down to strength. And I I always use, you know, Conan pushing the turnstile, you know, when he was a boy and then ultimately all the help dropped off, they all died. And then he's left the only guy pushing the thing and he's Arnold. Okay. So the reason is, is because strength, the guy had to be strong. So if you can't like focus on your back and not, and, and not involve everything else. So and from the workout element, basics. If you're a beginner and you want a big back, basics. 
weighted pull-ups, deadlifts, and that's pretty much it. If you did deadlifts and weighted pull-ups, heavy rows, something like that, you would you would ultimately eventually build an amazing back with those three exercises. That's it. As far as foods, there's no food that's going to target your back. So, oh, I don't, and I know maybe that I'm misreading. The, I, I think the, I think so. I, I think I don't think that that's what he meant. But <laughs> I, 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 I don't think that's what he meant. I, I and that's the other thing, right? Like, it's hard for you to address the nutrition component when you don't even know where right. the person is at all. So, I mean, that's that's kind of, I did, and I will say this, I was 90% right uh, with what you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, yeah, I don't think, uh, yeah, he's uh, from Argentina. So, look, uh -huh. man, yeah, if, if you want to chime in, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself, where you're at or yeah. what you're actually going for, uh, you know, that we could, you know, John can jump on it. But uh, I don't know, man, well, overall. Let me, inter let me interrupt you really quick. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give everybody a basic, basic okay. to answer that nutrition element. This is basic. If you have a plate round dish and that's your meal, yeah. half is protein. No matter what you do, no matter what meal you're eating, half of what you're eating should be protein. That's if you eat half of the, your plate, if you're designing your meal and you got a plate, you put it down on the counter and you're putting food in it. Half of it's got to be protein. Carbs and fat are going to ultimately judge the other half. I would use more fat than carbs, but that's just me. But half of it's got to be protein. If you do that, you have covered 90% of your nutritional basics as far as growing mass goes. You have to have protein. And if you do, and you're taxing your body the way you should be doing to stimulate the growth response because you are forcing your body to do something it can't do, and you have the amino acid building blocks on board to compensate for what you can't do, how your body's going to rectify that situation is by building more muscle. So if you have, if you stimulate the growth response by training hard and you have the building blocks on board, you are going to grow, period. Yeah, um, so I'm. Just, this is going to sound totally out of the blue, but I, was it called the Wheel of Pain? Because they were they were building off of what you're talking about. I think Rogue brought something like that to the Arnold. Maybe they've done it more than once, and maybe they brought it to other places. But I could have swore it was. It looked pretty hellish. Um, yeah, <laughs> like it looked. Bad well, well in, in, in Conan, if you remember the scene, it was like a turnstile. It was like a subway turnstile. Right. Yeah. Horizontal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this one a little different, but they I remember they came out with a video and showed uh what how they built it, which is really cool. But I'll send it I'll send it to you and you could if you've not seen it. It's pretty it, it looks pretty horrible uh in terms of how bad it it messes you up. Uh, we do have one more question then John's got to jump. He's got a hard out at 11. Uh as a new lifter, where do I start in terms of a split and training frequency? All the information is so conflicting, but I guess uh, look, it may, maybe uh I think John's going to say this. What's your goal? What do you want to do? Um, and how, also, how much time do you have to dedicate to this, right? So how much are you willing to dedicate to it? Uh, also, the more, the more you eat, the more money you got to toss out there. If you're going to have supplements, that's even more of your budget. So there's a lot of, a lot of questions you got to answer before. I mean, or just go exercise outside without weights. Go do yeah. weight workout. Well, how, yeah, and how old are you? How old yeah. are you too is really important. Aspect. Yeah. Look, look, there, like the article I just submitted to you. This is like this is like my 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 mantra now. It it, it depend. Building muscle depends on only one thing: survival. Your body has a survival mechanism. Your survival mechanism is designed to keep the distance between birth and death as far apart as possible. Because there is only one thing we are absolutely 100% sure of after we're born, and that is we're going to die. And other than that, there is no guarantee, none. There's only one guarantee in life, and that's death. The, uh, the, the space in between is what we got to work with. Okay, so, so we're, we're <laughs> on to the positive segments here, like I see. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I've found? I've found that if you reduce to the ridiculous, there becomes clarity. Okay. Right. So in, in so far as that the survival mechanism exists, 
in in and not just in humans plants animals every, the, 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 life on earth is designed to survive and everything life on earth does is geared to survival and continuing the species so rely on the survival mechanism the survival mechanism with respect to lifting weights and building muscle is if you subject your body to a stress it cannot tolerate the adaptive response is to grow muscle in order to tolerate the stress so if that stress is go back to the arnold example pushing that turnstile with the, with the ox the other three guys eventually is one by one they die off the load that they were that they were assisting with now becomes spread out among the rest of the people tied to the wheel, yeah. the turnstile. So and, and that lifts the you know the resistance up, and as the resistance increases, the workload increases. The body adapts by growing more muscle. It's really simple. So as a beginner, what you want to do is is define the basic exercises for each major muscle group. For chest, that's going to be bench presses. Arnold Schwarzenegger, one of the best chests in the business, only did bench presses and flies. That's it. Um, yeah. You know, so you have to identify what the power moves are in these, you know, body parts. For back, it's going to be seated rows, deadlifts, and weighted pull-ups. For shoulders, it's going to be presses and side laterals. Um, for arms, it's going to be pretty basic. A lot of guys that I knew in the in, in the old days really didn't train arms that much because they were training arms as an ancillary body part to chest, back, and shoulders. So a lot of times, guys who were focusing on getting big biceps were 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 getting less results because they were overtraining their biceps, and not letting them rest long enough. The I, I think there's a couple of things that beginners have to get through their head before they even touch a weight. And I think the biggest one is, is that muscles are not built in the gym. They are built in bed. In the gym, you, your goal is to stimulate the adaptive response that your body uses to tell you that the current structure is not adequate for the workload you're imposing on it. If you impose a greater and greater workload, Milo of Croton, the first bodybuilder, 2,600 years ago, he threw a baby bull on his shoulders and walked up the hills behind his farm. He did it every day. As the bull grew and got heavier, so did he. Adaptive yeah. response. But did he use, uh, like, did he put uh, the, the, the apparatus on his head and use bands when he was <laughs> trying to PR? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if they had been invented, then he wouldn't have yeah. used them. <laughs> no, probably not. Um, <laughs> no, but I think that's a good point, right? You know, it's it's worth repeating over and over and over again, especially to beginners, that you have to look at the whole the whole picture. So what you do for that hour or whatever in the gym, mm. it's it's yeah, it's going to help get you where you want to be if the other components are there as well. And if they're not, then you're going to it's going to be inadequate and you're going to sit there and say, what's, what am I doing wrong? And if you keep trying to fix it with train more training and, and training the same things over and over again, or trying to train it without the nutrition and, and recovery components, it's just, it's never going to work. Yeah. I think that and, and the realization that human beings are geared towards primarily instant gratification. Mm -hmm. That's why people are fat because they're hungry. Here's fettuccine Alfredo. Tastes really good. I'm going to eat that without any regard whatsoever to the ancillary effect of eating a diet prim primarily composed of fettuccine Alfredo. You're going to get fat no matter what you do. So the, the, the idea that muscle, a physique, a building a physique takes years when you want it tomorrow is something beginners have to get through their head. The guy who, 15 years old, whatever, never lifted a weight in his life, skinny little beanpole or a fat fuck like I was um, at 12, it, it, there is a long road ahead of you before you're going to look in the mirror and be any way satisfied with what you've got looking back at you. So you have to accept that. You cannot go into this thinking that two weeks from now, I'm going to look like Mr. Olympia. Ain't going to happen. And that is the, the the downfall of many guys who start lifting weights is that they're not getting discernible results in an acceptable period of time because they have a false 
image of what it takes to actually get the results they want. It takes time. It takes time and an unbelievable amount of suffering. And if you can suffer, persevere, increase the suffering as best you can and continue on that road uninterrupted, you're going to succeed. If you're if, if, if you haven't accepted those realities, you're not going to. Yeah. All right. Good stop. Good place to stop. I know you got to bounce. Um, yeah, you're only four minutes late. That's all right. Not, yeah, I can be a little late. I just can't be super late. <laughs> no. no, I got I, you. I am hosting a meeting. You know, it doesn't look good when the meeting host is like 15 no. minutes. No, unless, <laughs> unless you show up and you're like got your papers all like, crunching, like oh, I was really crunching numbers. Uh, but all right. Well, listen, we thanks. Should, we should, we should continue this on our Thursday show. Let's do it. Because, yeah, because I like when these new guys, young guys, even seasoned guys come in with, you know, legit issues and questions that want it, want answers to because I was in that boat. I was there with my hands up like, what the fuck? What do I do now? Yeah. Or I'm not, you know, and I, I wish somebody would tell me the basic truth about what I wanted to know the answer to. And, and if I could, I could, if I could have had that, I would have been really, really happy, you know? Yeah, so. I had that too. I, You know, when I first went to the gym, there was no, besides magazines, you know, internet was still in, in its infancy, but it was, uh, you know, thankfully there was people there that saw that I had no idea what I was doing and I would watch the people who did and they would tell me, hey, by the way, you're only training your arms. And I was like, well, I only know how to do <laughs> they were like, So they're like, well, do you know how to squat? And I'm like, no, I don't. So, but that, good thing they showed me because I'm sitting there yeah. looking around and, you know, but that's what it is. And, and it's also just learning and being reinforced that the basics work. You don't, you know, seeing that dude earlier on the, the, the link we posted, you don't need all of that stuff um you know you any like, of that no, stuff none no. zero in fact the more of that stuff you do the worse results you're going to get if any yeah yeah and it also just makes it needlessly complex uh sometimes said it's not sexy it's not always look looks cool but the basic movements still work that's why we all still do them from 2600 years ago when this dude lifted, <laughs> putting stuff on his back and then walking around and uh you know as it gets heavier he gets stronger so all right, so we'll be back Thursday. Hopefully, you guys will be around. Come back, uh, and I'll see if we can maybe toss out some some uh, stuff on on Muscle Social and just get some. We'll just get some beginner questions going. Yeah, cool, that'd be great. All Girls right, too, you know. Yeah, yeah, for them. sure. No, I think it'd yeah. be perfect. Uh, so yeah, we'll do that. And uh, 